Well, thank you for staying with us. That song doesn't get old at all. We are all we have. We defend our land. And right now, a sizable number of people are looking to the youths to do that, defend our land. Isn't that why the, the national anthem also uh, says that in its second verse, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders, help our youths the truth to know. Question is, what's the truth? Well, the truth part of it is that Nigerian youths are a sizable number today in the population. According to statistics, Nigerian youths consistently accounted for more than 40% of the entire population consistently. And that's for the class of youths. But that's not to say that the population of Nigeria that's below 35 something in the region of 70% of the entire population. So in recent times, the agitation of youth over the state of governance in the country is, is becoming alarming. And of course, if you are close to the social media or you hear about it, you most certainly know some of these things. So while many youths have been raising their concerns over the states of policy, encouraging one another to get their permanent voter cards ahead of the general elections, that's further our conversation on how we ensure that they don't just get the uh, the PVCs as one of those aesthetics or those identity cards they need for all kinds of transactions, but they actually use it consistently. Uh, over the years, what we have found out is that between 1999 and today, the more people you have on the voter, on the voter register of INEC, the lower the percentage of people who actually come out to vote. Why is that? Let's have this conversation this morning with the say ladies first, so I'm going to honor that this morning. Sholakwe Adeshui is a youth advocate. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, sitting next to him is Baba Shola Uwaje, who is a candidate of uh, one of the political parties for the Lagos State House of Assembly and uh, Koshofe constituency one, to be precise. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. He is already in the game. And we have a youth governance coach in Binga Demujimi. Thank you so much for joining us this Thanks morning. Thanks for having me here. Perhaps, um, so I want to begin with you. What has your own experience been? Because you are already in it. The, the challenges that you've had, the, the entry level, the ups and downs, I hear it's a game. I don't think governance is a game, but they say politics is, so I'm wondering. Give us a, a sneak. Uh, Okay. A sneak peek into your life before you got in, and how far so far? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so the the game started last year. I actually so it's a game, really. It's, it's a game. Oh, really? If, if you if you look at it, if it um, well for the for the purpose of context, let's call it a game. Okay. Right. Uh, because you need to understand the rules governing the game. Mm. Right. Sometimes the rules don't favor common sense. That's why a lot of people, you know, look at it from outside and be like, okay, you know, I'm just going to stay, stay away from it. I contested in the local government elections last year. So, I mean, I could, I was able to understand it better. And it was, um, it's a situation whereby uh, it's not easy. The environment, you know, we find ourselves in at the moment does not really encourage youth participation in politics beyond obtaining your PVC and voting, because it goes beyond that. It's very important for us to take that step further as youth. I'm under 35, and um, uh, the earlier we start, you know, the better for this country, because there's a huge lacuna between the elderly people in, in politics through governance now and the youths that are really clamoring for that change, the youths that are clamoring for, you know, the inclusion uh, in politics. What's your own experience been? Uh, it, it's been a roller coaster. I, I think I'll say I'm lucky to have found myself in um, a more stable environment politically compared to other, you know, other places. Um, so personally, I... I've really enjoyed the experience, and I, I believe that 
um, we have a lot to do in terms of orientation. It's very huge. Sometimes when I sit down with my friends, I can't even discuss politics beyond, you know, social commentary, what we read on the newspapers and all. It's, it's difficult to reach out to them because, in quote, they're not in the game. One? Yes, it's, it's difficult to reach out to them. So there is a huge need for a national orientation. But this will not come from, you know, the media. It's meant to come from the political parties. You know, we... We have a situation whereby we're not we're doing little or nothing in terms of youth inclusion mm. in politics. So uh, you probably agree from what I can hear you say now with a comment from Sami Todo. He sat right there where you sat okay. when he was in our studio here, and he said there's a difference between voter education and political education. Hundred percent. So you also agree that we need that. Political education, yes, not just a photo yes, education. I'm actually a political scientist by um, discipline. Okay. I study political science, and you know, it's it's something that didn't just start now. You know, right from my university days, I was able to understand and learn some theories governing politics. Right? It's 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 as much as possible in this country more than ever. We need, you know, advocates that can, you know, it's interesting. It's that interesting, term. interesting that you talk about yeah. uh, policies because the last time I checked, some people who say that they, some of the policies that govern govern political science or politics policies that govern policies don't or principles that govern policies don't seem to work in Nigeria. Do you agree with I that? I agree. I agree. Um, of course, yes, I agree that um, some of those principles that we know work in other climes uh, somehow <laughs> have failed to work in Nigeria. But that's also because of the, largely we have this dirt in leadership. Mm. And, and it's because, like you said, there's a huge gap between the current, um, the elderly, those who are, as it were, in governance right now, and the youth. And this gap um, has created, uh, it's not just in terms of number, as an age, even in terms of know-how, in terms of knowledge, in terms of capacity building. And um, a lot of young people have not been, have not been into governance. Uh, quite a number of our youth that you find on social media talk about uh, politics and some things really do not even understand the history of Nigeria and the politics and how things have evolved over the, over the years. But do you and blame I, them? I don't, I, that was not exactly my next sentence. I, I do not blame them. I do not blame them because um, they, we have not taken time to educate. And um, for instance, right now, as a youth advocate, one of the things I do to young people is to clearly encourage as many people as possible to get into the know of politics. And so as many, um, there are organizations, um, independent people that are carrying on political trainings for young people, and quite a number of them are free now to ensure that we're able to educate young people, as many as are interested in going into politics. Like I said, um, political youth participation in, in, in governance is beyond just voting and registering for a card. We have to be part, we have to be part of the uh, decision makers, stakeholders, getting involved. And getting involved, of course, is not, it's not, um, it's not that simple. You have to go through um, learning the process. You have to be ready to get into the game. What's the said. first step that you would say should be it? What's the first step people should take those who you would encourage to get involved, just as you say. Okay, so um, the first step will be to look beyond themselves. Yeah, because it's important to say that governance and politics is not about self. Because that's where we've gotten it. You have to look beyond yourself and begin to see my community, where I am, what can I do? We have young people in local communities within our, our states. And you have to look beyond just thinking about their pockets. And I know that the challenges are real. We are talking about youth who are still looking for employment. We are talking about youth who are trying to run businesses. I know quite a number of people who are doing one thing or the other to ensure there's the financial capacity. Mm -hmm. So I think the first step is for each youth to become, discover themselves, know who they are, what they want for their life, because until you are able to discover yourself, you actually cannot lead. But you know, you, you have a state when you said, you know, it's difficult to look beyond self. 
because a sizable number of these young people, as we speak, have been home because their lecturers on are on strike for the past four months. True. There was a time in history, I don't know, you may remember, where ASU strike lasted 18 months. Some of my colleagues in this organization mm. were victims you know, of that. So that challenge is right bef before them. Um, and as the national president of the Nigerian Association of Nigerian, National Association of Nigerian Students said, eventually the federal government will settle with ASU. They will not lose anything. It is the students that will lose a lot mm -hmm. because the houses that they have rented, there is no pause on the rental. Mm -hmm. they, there is no pause on the budget they would have spent to eat and uh, take care of themselves, to deal with some issues in the course of their study. Mm -hmm. So those challenges are there. Now they have to go look for extra money. The challenges are right there in their faces. So it's going to be difficult to say, don't I, look for yourself. I, I, I agree yourself. with you, and I couldn't agree more because, you see, we can go on and on and talk about the challenges that, be, that, are, that are against the youths in Nigeria mm -hmm. today. However, in, when you have this kind of situation, the truth is that there has to be some form of disruption, mm -hmm. some things that go beyond the ordinary, beyond the normal. And that's why and then there are different, don't forget that there are different um, categories of youths. When I say categories, some are more opportuned than the other. Yeah. So there are those who already have advantages mm -hmm. and uh, as it were would have to leverage their current <laughs> advantage not just for themselves but to enhance the entire uh, nation and youth participation in politics. Okay. okay. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Mujimi. So I, I would like you to take a historical perspective to this whole conversation about youth participation in politics. Um, a good number of people will recall that the independence we are talking about today came because some young people decided to ask for independence. First, I think it was in 1964 when Fanny Coyote, you know, asked, you proposed it, but that was shut down at the time. And then further on, no, 1954. 54. And then further on, I think it may be 56 or 59 or thereabout, that bill came back by uh, Antony Nahoro and we have what we have today. They were young. The Awolawas, the Azikiways, the Tafawa, they were very young people in their 20s and early 30s and all of that. But it would seem that we didn't carry on that torch. We didn't sustain that trajectory for the young people today, such that now, even at, in the last dispensation, the youth leader of one political party was in his 70s. So in terms of getting the youths involved, first of all, interested and then involved. How do you see the political structure in the country um, structured in a way that encourages or not the young ones? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so before we go to the political structure, can we talk about the Nigeria state structure, Nigeria structure itself? If, if a foundation is destroyed, there is nothing any one million righteous men can do about it. You have two options. Crash the building, start all over again, or you allow the building to crash on you and you are dead. So what happens to our structure? What we practiced before now, was it not profitable? Talking about the regional system. That is why Ayo, Partai Wakekumi designed Nigerian national flag as a youth traveling to Britain to go and study after his first degree here. What was the compensation for him, as it were? That was 1959. In 2009, fast forward how many years, this man was sick of some ailments in Ibadan. I was one of the people who took him to the hospital. No national award was given until people started crying on, and one telecommunication company gave him um, maybe two million, I cannot know, I cannot remember, until he owned a house. When the, the wages of every laborer is entitled to him, when we see, or when our children see, 
that look at what my father did. I sit here, my father was one of the brains, one of the people who constructed Ashijire Dam, Old Oyo State, now Osho State. Do you want me to tell you about how the government treated my own father? What makes people like us to see stand, even at our age, is because of our love for the country. Why? Because this is not a hobby for us. It is not a burden, but it's a calling. But the question is this. How many of these children, how many of these youths see this as a calling? So the first thing you are questioning is our reward system as a nation. As a nation. That, and that comes out of the structure. Because um, every product is guided, is operated by a manual. When that manual is for, when that manual is not there, or when that manual is manipulated or perverted, what becomes of the product? So the manual that governs Nigeria, called Constitution, which is actually Decree Twenty Four of the military regime, how is it? Have we questioned it? How many people sat down to write it, representing people? That's number one. Number two, what happened to our civic education? It has been manipulated. It has been it has been edited. It has been perverted. So these things, and Ayo, a good father will train his children and expect them to grow and be better. But in Nigeria, it is not so. These fathers and mothers climb the apex of life with a particular ladder and destroy the ladder. That is why. So when you say, when people talk about um, youth are irresponsible, they are this, they are idle, they are lazy. Hey. Don't look at what is on the head. Look at the background. Look at the foundation. Okay. Now, we, everyone would admit <laughs> with that conversation, <laughs> the last three years or so that I've hosted programs on this channel, we have talked about these challenges and challenges and challenges. Yeah. But um, I think we can all agree that um, you can't stay in an environment that um, gets you sick. And expect to get well in that same environment. Mm. So there are people who are in the system now, and we haven't really gotten the kind of thing that we want. Mm. Perhaps that's why people are advocating and, and admonishing young people to get into the system. Mm. Hopefully, they would have new thinking. Mm. They would have because I, I recall, and, and I, I say this: the the advantage that the young folks who fought for independence had was education. Education. Their parents didn't have it. Yeah. The advantage that the young people have today, in my opinion, is technology. Their parents don't they have it. They are digital, digital immigrants. Yeah. But these young people are digital natives. natives. And that's the power that they have now. So do you see a place, a, a time where with the policies that we have or don't have, because the, some young people we all know have done so well for themselves that uh, they, they, they build small infrastructure, small systems, small businesses that are sold for hundreds of millions of dollars in the same country. Right. That may, and it's in this country that they did it. Yeah. And they sold it it's still in this country. Yeah. Young people did something, the Kurudu boys, for instance, put it on the internet, mm -hmm. and a number of people saw Somebody them, then the Netflix, yeah. and all this, and they, they began to... So the opportunities are there for young people. Thank you. In terms of governance, yeah. what do we need to do? We know the challenges are there. Mm -hmm. As you said, the structures are faulty, but we can't wait we shouldn't wait because most young people don't have an option. This is the sure. only country that they have. Okay. So what can we do now, encouraging the young people to get involved so that they can begin to tinker with the engine, mm -hmm. oil the wheels, and do better? Okay, so I say, so the examples you give are fantastic, but don't forget that that is in technology entertainment, which is global. They operate on the global platform. They are not limited here. Nigerian governance system is not global. Every politics is local. Absolutely right. And don't, don't get it wrong. When these people make up their mind to do what is right, I supported Baba Shola when he said what we should do is orientation. That's why I mentioned civic education. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, where, where our students, our children should have learned their social responsibility, civic responsibility, national engagement, but it's not there. Where is Noah 
not to know Azaku, <laughs> National <laughs> Orientation Agency. Where are they? What are they doing? When last have you heard about them? So is it deliberate that intentionally they just put it there and nothing is working there? So we need to NGOs, individuals, religious organizations, traditional institutions, traditional institutions. In fact, if I have my opportunity, I will, I will ensure that every KBS, every OBs, every MS, every week there is town hall meeting in their area every week to engage our youth and educate them. Then you know what? You don't have to see that. Why? Because you can't determine the ingredients for a soup when you're outside the kitchen. So they have to come. At the same time, I understand because I, I coach them, so I understand their thinking and their fears. Let me give you just one. Ayo, your daughter wants to vote and she is she's ah no we no go agree. Ah, we have to vote. I have my PVC, I have this. Ah, who are you voting for? I'm voting for party A, blah, blah. And on election day. Why on cue? Some guys just came from nowhere. Bam! Please, when you hear that, what what will you tell you? <laughs> what, so what election, you it's, it's, a, it's a whole gamut. <laughs> it's a whole gamut. But well, let me come back to you, uh, uh, Mr. Waji. Uh, those fears are genuine. You would admit, but is it strong enough, in your opinion, to hold the young, the large population of young people back? Um, so what I want to state here is that you see the youths we have now, we have an advantage. And I want to call it superior thinking. Mm. We, we have uh, enumerated the challenges here. Challenges, challenges, yeah. But we need to start looking beyond that. When I joined politics last year, as last year, you know, I joined a political party where we were just three in the whole local government. When I was going to have my elections last year, I called 33 of my friends to be polling agents. They knew nothing about politics. I told them, just stay there, wear the tag, you know. And the one advice I gave them, said, if they show you gone, you know, just relax. You know, don't, you understand? <laughs> but one thing, one thing, one thing people noticed was that the way they conducted themselves, they didn't come there for violence, they just came to do their job, you know. There was a, there was a spirit of, should I say, camaraderie mm. amongst the people that came to, in quote, disrupt whatever was there to disrupt. And the agents are, ah, this guy, this guy is a nice guy, you know, <laughs> okay, you know. What I'm trying to say is that at some point, we need to start looking beyond our fears. The people that fought for independence, the people that fought for um, the annulment of democracy, you know, they, f they look beyond their fears. At some point, they had to run, you know, when it was getting too hot. But the moment we start looking beyond our fears, you would be surprised at how much power, at how much traction we can gain. Okay? I, the political party I'm representing now, I mean, I joined last year. You know, it, 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 was, it was a matter of superior thinking. Okay? We see what you have to offer as a youth. Come. Do you understand? We can't keep sitting down and expect to be counted. We have to stand up. Right. In we, if you look at it, if we do a macro analysis, for example, the premier of Kosovo, you know, the the regent of San Marino, these people are under thirty five. The premier of Finland, you know, it was said that she went for a disco party. She's thirty six. Why can't we look at we we import you know a lot of world views, especially as youths, you know, that's coming back to technology now. Mm. We import a lot of world views. Why can't we as well look at what these people did? Macron became president at 39, right? And these are people that are out there. If we bring it back to our local space, we know that there's a lot of soot, you know, a dark cloud over youthful inclusion in, um, in politics. And you understand what I mean by dark cloud. He spoke about people destroying the ladder. And it's, um, it's quite unfortunate, but at some point we just have to start building our own ladders. Ladders. Yes, we have to start doing it. Because what would happen within the next two windows, when I mean two windows, I mean eight years, is that we will start looking for leaders we would not find. Yeah. Thank you. If we're not careful. So beyond um, 
I take solace in the fact that we are, um, we are somewhat awake now. If you see the spike in you know, voters' registration, it's, it's encouraging. Mm. But my fear now is the application of that next year. Last year, less than 10% of registered voters voted in the local government election. Less than 10%. So it's very important to, you know, we need to start looking at these figures. Okay. Before, <clears throat> before we go into the next election, let's put it, I have it at the back of our mind that Lagos, the commercial nerve center of Nigeria, voted in their governor with a little above 700,000 votes. And we claim, or we are most probably over 14 million people mm. in Lagos. 22 million. I mean, so <laughs> when we start talking about these figures, you can see the huge discrepancy in um, the number in of people who come out of the okay. And youths make up over 70% of the people in the country. Okay, well, so, madam, um, let's, 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 I'll take you to two different tangents. The first of it is um, a comment ascribed to the vice president who, by the way, we're told, has been the forefront of engaging young people, um, oiling their will to be a part of the system. And one of the things that he said was that, look, young people need to get involved at any level. Even if you are PA to the PA to the PA, <laughs> get involved any which way you would, as you said the other time, um, Mr. Waji, graduate up the ladder building a new ladder altogether. Yeah. Uh, you, you will graduate from the third level PA, you become a second level PA, <laughs> first level PA, or whatever it is until you get there. So what do you think of that? That's one. Second leg is gender inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very important because <laughs> I contend that well, young men, I'm not, I'm a man, but I'm not gonna look in your eyes and say, before saying this, women are stronger. Whether we like it or not, I agree. A much, much stronger balance mentally, mm. emotionally, psychologically, and all of that. And looking at all kinds of cases we have on our hands, corruption cases, criminal cases, and all, the, the figures don't favor the men. But at the same time, it's the men that hold the it's reins scary. of authority and all of yeah. that. So how do we balance these two uh, levels that I, that I just mentioned to you. I'm giving you that task because first, you're a woman, and secondly, you're a youth advocate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I would first say that um, based on the comment credited to the vice president, I think, um, you know, truly it's been said that you see better when you ride on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead of you. So, of course, it's, uh, it's just correct to say that every young person uh, who is interested in governance and who wants to see uh, Nigeria advance should begin to think of joining and just like uh, Baba Shola here, go beyond registering and get involved at the local level, the ward, uh, there are political parties at all ward level. I like the fact that is that just three of them were involved <laughs> and what an opportunity to quickly get mm. positioned mm. and be recognized. So I think young people should uh, take this momentum that is on the social media mm. and, and um, for voters' registration and go ahead and begin to think of joining political parties at the ward level. Mm. However, it's also important to uh, strategize to find mentors in politics. Um, not to say that I am, you know, validating the political godfatherism that we know here, but, uh, you know, and that's where the balance must be. As much as you need those who are ahead uh, to learn, uh, you also need to have your own, your own self. Like, like I said before, you must have your own mind. We must grow beyond just wanting to replicate what those who have gone ahead of us have done because at least the fact speaks for itself. We need to begin to think how to, do we ensure that we are not replicating the errors that has been done. So it means that our people, voter education, we must improve the knowledge base, we must build capacity, we must align with mentors whose examples speak and that we, we, can, we would like to align with. And of course, that way can begin to build. I also think it's important for young people to synergize. 
So I see that a lot in people uh, getting uh, vehicles for people to go and register, provide water, and registration boots, and all that. Play that, music for you them. know, play music. I love what the, the, those in uh, the entertainment industry are doing, uh, organizing concerts and getting people. But beyond that, at the level of um, of, um, of um, registering and awareness, we must begin to look at how we then get involved in the decision-making process, yeah. get involved in the political parties. Be, you know, we talked about the delegates doing the primaries a lot, and of course, what it's the people that make up the delegates. So if we're not in the parties, the we cannot become the delegates. The yeah. delegates, as it were, own the power to say, these are the people that will represent us. Then as far as, um, as far as uh, women participation is concerned, gender balance, it is no longer news. Uh, it's a globally uh, recognized thing that you need to involve, we involve women in politics and in governance at all levels. Um, governance begins, of course, from the home. We all know how much influence our wives or sisters have on the home to raise people. So you cannot overemphasize this capacity in they're women. The, they're the vice president oh. or deputy governor. <laughs> they are the president of the financial Senate. They are they're financial the, controllers. They are the minister yes. of finance, I'm the you, chief accountant, you, auditor you, general. You cannot overemphasize the capacity of a woman. And any nation that consistently uh, removes the women from being in a position of power uh, actually is shortchanging itself. Mm. It's, short it's just a matter of time. And of course, we are here today saying it that Nigeria has it where we've been shortchanged because we have limited the participation of women in politics. So I think right now um, also that women should also look beyond, you know, I know that we talk about these challenges, how do I run uh, for young ladies, uh, okay, from the, from the voter registration, it was shown recently that the increase in voter registration was, uh, co is contributed to by largely students uh -huh. and housewives. That's yeah. INEX statistics. That the recent increase was seen largely uh, 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 contributed students. to, you know, by students and housewives, of course. So women can say, okay, I have time. Um, I want to be a part of this. But beyond just registering again, I'm saying that the women must say that I'm not just going to sit down and do nothing. I have to be in the place where they're taking that decision. The market women are there. Mm. We must go beyond the level where you're just looking for a man to support and somebody to give you a few peanuts and mm -hmm. say, come and vote for me. But to say that now we want to be part of the decision the process. Okay. It is so critical. Let me take you uh, to a part we haven't you know, really gone to. Well, the, most of you, if not all, are from the Southwest, but I'd like you to speak to the Northwesterner, to the Northeasterner, to the North Central Nigerian, to the Southeasterner, to the South South Nigerian. They are in their own space. They have their own peculiarities that may not be known to a sizable area that you have been. And I know that you have traveled the country far and wide, you know. What are some of the peculiar challenges you think some of these people in the various parts of Nigeria have that may not be as prominent as they should be, that are contributing to either their own encouragement or apathy about voting or even about political party membership altogether? Okay. Um, for example, in the North, um, if I should read the voters' apathy in the uh, North, it's very, very low compared to us here. Mm. And Great. very, very low. The, you know, in the north, their feudal system helps them to some extent, even though we see some negativities there. But the truth of the matter is, in terms of politics and elections, it helps them. Because uh, the Godfather says, and I do, <laughs> that's all. In Southwest, the Godfather says, I will do 50%. <laughs> <laughs> the Godfather says, who, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> but in the Southeast and South South, who be the Godfather? Who? Where they come from? Do you understand? Those are our peculiarities. Mm. Now, what I feel or what I've seen in the South... But just, just a second. That's not okay. to say that there is significant information available to fellow Nigerians all over the No, 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 no. That's what I'm going. That, for example, over there, um, how do you justify a people that um, the only station, communication channel they listen to is a particular channel on the radio? 
and any other information or any other news from any other place doesn't matter. For me, that's too narrow. That's too myopic. And you don't blame them. That is how they were raised intentionally to raise them like that so that they can have just one mind traffic lane. Monosyllabic thinking. Monos, thank you. Then in the southeast and south south, what I see there is um, arrogance of arrogance of ignorance. <laughs> if there is anything like that, when you don't know, wisdom demands that you humble yourself to know. And I don't blame them. I think where they are coming from is not helping them. They want everybody wants to have an opinion, and everybody wants to instill that opinion. Everybody wants to ensure that it is my own ideology or my own idea or my own say that happens. But all of this, my, my apologies, because yeah. we're winding down in about yeah. 30 seconds. All of this is not to say that we, the, the dearth of political education that you ascribed to the National Orientation Agency, if that was significant, will we still have these challenges in the various regions? So I mentioned NOE and I mentioned other institutions, traditional institutions, religious centers, schools, and other NGOs. If every all these sectors, all these departments in our social, infra, uh, social infrastructure comes together. The truth of the matter is this lacuna, this gap, will be highly reduced. OK. Mm -hmm. Last words now, um, Mr. Waji. If you were to address uh, a number of youths now in 30 seconds, what would you be telling them? It's possible. Youth inclusion in politics is possible. Are there challenges? Yes. But we need to look beyond the challenges if we are going to get included. And we have to get, we, sorry, we must get included. It's very compulsory because okay. within the next two windows, like I said, we are going, we are going to have ourselves to blame. Okay. Because we'll be there without any form of leadership. Mm. We'll be there without any form of numbers. And I don't think that's a place I want. I don't <laughs> want to see that day come. <laughs> well, madam. Yeah. Okay, for me, I'll say it's, it's our time. It's now, and it's possible, mm. and everybody needs to rise up. Go beyond the leap. Go beyond the social media. Mm. Get involved. Okay, Be counted. Okay. And for me, sir, all Nigerian youths, please rise up. Be like a Banki W. Mm. Invade the National Assembly. Please leave that presidency, whatever. Just leave it there. Don't bother. You don't even want them to start at the local government level. No, no, no. No, what I'm saying is that national, no national assembly. We, we, Ayo, we have lots of youth at the national, at the local government level now. Ask him. In mm. all parties, even parties that you don't know. Trust me, we have guys there. Okay. But where the power lies in changing Nigeria, please mass invasion national assembly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to thank you very much for all for being here this morning, Benga Demujimi, youth governance coach. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. We we'll have to bring you down to come and do some coaching for the young people. <laughs> Shalakwe Adeshui, a youth advocate. Thank you so much for your time and for thank adjusting you. your schedule. <laughs> We have Thank to acknowledge you. that. And <laughs> Baba Shala Owaje, uh, candidate of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Koshofe Constituency 1. Thank you so much you. for being here this morning. My pleasure. Our next conversation is still in the interest of the young people. We'll be back after now.